Please be seated. Welcome to the 130th commencement exercises of Wagner College. Thank you, Dr. Haran, for leading us as the faculty marshal, and thank you, Dr. Kalber, for your special place in the commencement exercise. Today, your procession, led by nine Golden Seahawks, Stephen Beyer, Philip Heck, Lois Lewy Hedberg, Robert Smith, Dennis Dinkin, Daniel Ramein, Ron Yarshevsky, and from our Board of Trustees, Jay Hardig and Maureen Robinson are all from the class of 1967, and they took the same steps that you took today over this oval 50 years ago. And they wanted to be here with you today. <clears throat> After four challenging years, your special day of recognition has arrived. On behalf of the entire college community, we extend our congratulations and our admiration for all of your achievements, your leadership, and your service to the campus, to New York City, and to the nation. I welcome all of your parents and families and friends, distinguished guests and members of our community. We have with us some of our very special supporters. Some have endowed gifts and scholarships made in support of your work at the college Others give tirelessly to the efforts to extend the opportunities available to our students and our faculty. I'd like to recognize some of them at the beginning of the ceremony. From our Board of Trustees, Dr. Warren Prochi, class of the 1968 and chair of the Board of Trustees and honorary recipient today. Steve Aiello, Mary Caracappa, class of the 1982. Aletta Diamond, class of 1965. Ralph Green, Jr. Jay Harding, class of 1967, and former chair of the Board of Trustees. Mark Lebovitz, class of 1991. Richard Morgan, Joan Nicholas. Fred Williamson, class of 1964. <laughs> Williamson clan is in force. You'll hear about them in a second. <laughs> and former board member and uh, class of 67, Maureen, a, a current board member, I should say, and class of 1967, and my dear friend, Maureen Robinson. <laughs> You are an accomplished and engaged class, one of the very best in Wagner's history. Your individual profiles illustrate a very strong composite personality for the class of 2017, one marked by strong academic achievement, remarkable leadership, and sustained commitment to public service and to civic engagement. Today is special for each of you and every one of your family members and your friends. It is especially significant for 19 of you who all share Wagner alumni in your families. Among this group of what we call legacies with us today is Gail Mahoney, a finance major from Leonardo, New Jersey, and her cousin Trevor Williamson, a marketing major from Wanamasa, New Jersey. And they are part of 13 Wagner graduates in the Mahoney-Williamson plan. And that's a Seahawks family, I'll tell you. Also among you are 19 fellow international graduates from Canada, China, Egypt, Ghana, India, New Zealand, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, and Zimbabwe. You are truly our brothers and sisters at Wagner. Many others of you have added the, to the internationalism of the campus by studying and or providing service to other nations, including Australia, Belize, England, Ghana, Greece, Guatemala, Haiti, Ireland, Italy, and Spain. And in total, your graduating class represents 36 states and 11 different countries. We are so happy that we are conferring degrees on three Americans who served in our military. Let's give them a special round of applause. James Black and Eric Reiner from our Evelyn Linfor Spiro School of Nursing. And Scott Linder from our Phys Physician's Assistant Program. Congratulations to all of you. There are a number of firsts in this commencement ceremony. This is the first class of Bonner Student Leaders, our nationally distinctive program in leadership and public service. 
these 12 students, this first group we've ever graduated as Bonner leaders, these 12 students have provided over 20,000 hours of community service and strategic leadership throughout their four years, each making important contributions in collaboration with our community partners. This is also the very first class in a 134-year history of Wagner to confer the highest level of academic degree as we graduate our first doctoral graduates with a Doctor of Nursing Practice recipients from our Evelyn Lindforth School of Nursing. All of you have contributed to the success of this college as students, as scholars, as athletes, as performers and as civically engaged agents of positive change. Two shining examples will speak directly to you from this platform later in the ceremony. Dylan Quinn and Gabby Alopo. <laughs> Dylan came to Wagner from Chaska, Minnesota. He is an excellent student with a 3.75 GPA, majoring in finance and completing a minor in film and media studies. In addition to serving as Student Government Association president for the last two years, he worked in national political campaigns, numerous campus organizations, and as well as completing several distinguished internships in New York. Dylan provided critical leadership in support of the Declaration of Change, doubling down on Wagner's deep commitment to diversity and social equity throughout our campus culture and our educational programs. Next year, Dylan Quinn will stay in New York and pursue a career in the media. And Gabby Alopu came to Wagner from Auckland, New Zealand. She, she graduates today with a major in psychology and a minor in sociology with a 3.7 GPA. Gabby is a member of Wagner women's water polo team, a four-time MAC championship team with a win in this year's NCAA tournament. If that were not enough, in and of itself, Gabby leaves an indelible imprint on the Wagner campus as a life force for social responsibility, active and positive engagement for social change, and for personal growth. For two years in a row, Gabby served as the coordinator of our new student orientation, where she led a remarkable program to engage, assist, and partner with our first year students in those critical first days and months adjusting to a new community she introduced these students to the expectations and skills for succeeding in a diverse and engaged campus. And as president of the Black Student Union, Gabby helped this campus and many students mediate the challenges and often bitterness and harm of the nation's witness to racial injustice. Gabby's commitment to fairness, justice, kindness moved many of us to a better dialogue of understanding and respect for each and for all of us. After commencement, she'll join the New Zealand Olympic water polo team. Congratulations to Gabby. <laughs> Dylan and Gabby represent your class well, just like Brandon Hart and Hadil Michal. Brandon from Mastic Beach, New York, a microbiology major and a Bonner leader, he spent so much of his four years deeply committed to see young children from economically challenged neighborhoods and find academic and emotional, social emotional success. He helped lead Wagner's Leadership Academy in conjunction with Port Richmond High School, as you know, our, a local neighborhood partnership. He helped, to, he helped students to find their unique talent and creativity and help them succeed despite the distress of urban challenges. His love for science will lead him to a fellowship at Rockefeller University to study and conduct research in the area of virology. And after this, he'll return to Wagner for a master's degree in microbiology. Hadil Mishal, a Bonner leader and history major, completes her studies with a 3.8 GPA, but that's only the surface of this whirlwind of public service, <clears throat> intellectual engagement, and social change. Whether working with Staten Island's largest anti-poverty organization, Project Hospitality, or generation citizen in helping high school students learn how to access the political and governmental systems, or partnering with new immigrants in El Centro de Migrante here in Port Richmond, or leading the Muslim Student Association, Adil worked tirelessly for finding solutions to heal and advance the worlds around her. She's always open to interrogate her own values as well as those she encounters, constantly looking for practical ways to build better communities. Next year, Hadil, Michelle will be on a one-year fellowship with the Paul Newman Foundation, Newman's own, 
to work as a youth services coordinator for the Food Trust in Philadelphia. Congratulations to Hadil. <laughs> Dylan, Gabby, Brandon, Hadil are remarkable representatives of this graduating class, as, as are so many of you. Here is a smattering, and it's just a smattering. I could be here for six hours talking about all of you, but we all die and you'd hang me in the process. But, <laughs> but here's just a smattering of notable examples of high academic achievement and scholarly research, for instance. Marisha Castillo from Honolulu, Hawaii, and a biopsychology major <clears throat> and honor student with a 3.8 grade point average, conducted research on traumatic brain injury at Johns Hopkins University, while also an active member of the Wagner Jazz Ensemble. Robbie Chekovich, a chemistry major and mathematics minor, conducted extensive research on environmental entropy among infants while also finding time to learn to intern at NYU's Langone Medical Center. Next year, Robbie will pursue her MS degree in material science at Stevens Institute of Technology. Tyler Crowley, a chemistry major from Hillsborough, New Jersey, will pursue the PhD at Florida State University. And David Ricciardi from Staten Island and a physics major with a math concentration built this incredible steam engine and he will be taking a position at Con Edison Company next year. The hardworking Olivia P. from Pasadena, Maryland. A biology major, a Bonner leader, who must have set a school record for the number of jobs one student can handle while both excelling academically and as a campus citizen, will realize her life stream of becoming a veterinarian by entering Tufts University School of Veterinary Medicine in the fall. So many of you have completed significant internships related to your majors and your academic interests. Michaela Williams, who we heard today just a while ago, a standout in our fabulous choir, performed at the Metropolitan Opera with the legendary soprano Kathleen Battle. From Old Bridge, New Jersey, Leslie Lopez, a Bonner leader and honors program student, majoring in international affairs, interned with the U.S. State Department. She also served with Staten Island Legal Ser Services, Make the Road, and the Wagner Holocaust Center while working as a writing intensive tutor. Leslie will be applying to law school next fall. Along with her in this class, Mandy Sutherland from Denton, Texas, a government and politics major and an honor student, interned with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office in New York, the Mayor's Office of Management and Budget, and in the U.S. Congressional Office. She was a member of this fabulous women's water polo team, and next year, she accepted a position as a paralegal with a prestigious New York law firm. Kelly Glenn from New Milford, New Jersey, a Bonner leader and sociology major <clears throat> with concentrations in Spanish and art, interned with Here, There, and Everywhere, an organization serving survivors of economic hardships, domestic abuse, sexual assault, and human trafficking, as well as with the Catholic Charities Refugee Resettlement Program and the Children's Aid Society. Many of you are focusing on your next career steps. In psychology, Randy Belay from Winthrop, Maine, and Alexandria Brown from Hawthorne, New Jersey, will both pursue PhDs. Randy will focus on clinical work in the foster care system, and Alexandria, an industrial organization at Northern Illinois University. Rebecca Martin from Staten Island, an honors program student with a major in English Literature and Religious Studies, graduates with a 3.9 grade point average. She heads to law school in the near future, and her fellow classmate in English, Caitlin Alcott from Natick, Massachusetts, majored in English and French, an honor student and a Bonner leader, she served as the lead literacy intern at PS20, and in a host of related work around helping others give voice to their needs with high school students in Generation Citizen and as a founder of the women's, Women of Wagner. Caitlin's plan is to pursue a career in higher education and attempting, uh, and will be eventually attempting a PhD in English literature. Sir John Day from Fresh Meadows, New York, a Bonner leader and Spanish major with minors in English literature and government and politics, interned in the New York Mayor's Office for Community Affairs and founded the Asian American Student Council among other numerous civic and campus commitments. He will be working full-time next year at FedCap Rehabilitation Services, while also managing two of his own businesses, his tutoring company, which he started, called Creative Study Zone, and something called Connecting Cafes, which you know more about than I do. Wagner's professional programs and those in the arts are known for the opportunities they provide our students. Wagner's outstanding 
theater program, always ranked among the very best nationally. <laughs> Full of stars on stage and behind stage, such as Madison Charlie Lasorda, who graduates with departmental honors and a 3.9 GPA in theater, concentrating in design and management. She worked on comprehensive range of main stage blockbusters, including Damn Yankees and Titanic and La Cage aux Faux. Next year, Charlie will study at Oxford, England, focusing on book publishing. Rachel Hauser from Sewickley, Pennsylvania, <laughs> completed the honors program while performing on the main stage and stage one. She'll follow her dream as an actor and playwright in Manhattan after graduation. And Carolyn Savoya from Ridgefield, Connecticut, also an honor student in theater and dance, volunteered with multiple myeloma foundation while Madison Decker and from Holland, PA, another honor student, interned at the Walnut Street Theater in Philadelphia and the New York Theater Workshop. And she'll start her career as a business assistant in Broadway's Manhattan Theater Club. <clears throat> Our arts administration majors always produce excellent results. This year, Megan Haas from Greenbrook, New Jersey, will develop a nonprofit dedicated to making dance available to underprivileged children and those with special needs. Teresa Reed, <coughs> excuse me, Teresa Reed from Staten Island, concentrated in both history and film and media studies while majoring in arts administration. She interned with Wagner's Holocaust Center, teaching lessons from the Holocaust to local middle school children while producing a short film about the work under the title, We Will Carry the World. Teresa di directed another film entitled Seeds of Change that featured a theater company of the same name. Her work garnered several first place festival prizes. The Nicholas School of Business, the Evelyn Lynn Force School of Nursing, as well as the Education and Physician Assistance programs are all beacons of academic excellence, campus leadership, and impressive civic engagement. Our PAs were involved in Belize and Guatemala providing critical services to those with serious health needs. Our nurses provided excellent care in Haiti in response to the severity of health disparities in this small nation constantly trying to recover from the impact of natural disasters. And many education and business students have equally engaged in our neighborhood partnership in Port Richmond and on Staten Island. One example is Brianna Treadway from Downington, Pennsylvania, who double majored in education and psychology, graduating with honors while a member of the varsity women's softball team and as a scholar athlete awardee of the NCAA and the Northeast Conference. Brianna gave so much of her time to children at PS 13, as well as youth summer camps designed for students with autism and medical needs. Some lucky school in her home state of Pennsylvania will be blessed when she joins their faculty as a gifted and caring teacher. So many of our nurses and PAs have secured excellent positions as they start their careers in healthcare. A few examples are Nadia Medawali, who will join the medical staff at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, and Anastasia Moore at Sloan Kettering, and Alex Negrillo at Mount Sinai, and Julia Butler at New York Presbyterian, just to name a few. Our PAs are graduating with exceptional skills that they take the next step in their professional world. Christian, Christina Baglino heads to Yale University for a post-PA surgical program. And Emma Kanitsky will, will join the neonatal unit at Children's Hospital in Philadelphia. And Elena Katsanos starts in liver transplant surgery at Mount Sinai and Alexa Briest at Staten Island University Hospital in the burn unit. Among our Nicholas School of Business graduates, Hamza Ahmed, Matthew Davulo, Alia Noor, Nicole Manone, Paul Siraco are all heading to work for Price Waterhouse Coopers, while Ali Alakalawi joins IBM, Danielle Barrow starts with North Nest Mutual, and Thomas Delahanty with Ernst & Young, and Julia Loria from Belgium and France joins Prudential. Julia is a remarkable young woman who worked diligently with Holocaust survivors and Wagner's Holocaust Education Center, a remarkable effort on her part. The academic and civic imprint of your class does not end here. It shines brightly throughout our athletics program. Our four-year athletes graduate with a 92% graduation rate. In addition to the very demanding training and practice and playing schedules as Division I athletes, they maintain well over a 3.0 GPA as a composite and they found time in their hearts to contribute over 4,000 hours of community service. 
No team shines brighter this year than our women's water polo team, four-time MAC champions. Undefeated this year in conference play, with non-conference victories over Harvard, Bucknell, and San Jose State. Most recently, they, def they defeated the University of California, San Diego, on the road, where they won the first entry round into the NCAA tournament. And these young women carry on a sterling academic legacy with the highest grade point average of all of the NCAA Division I women's water polo teams in the nation for five consecutive years. <laughs> Emily Riddle from Edmonton, Canada personifies these attributes. She's a 3.9 GPA graduate today with a major in accounting and a minor in biology. Emily will complete her master's here at Wagner in accounting next year. Our football team stood strong on the field and they once again led the campus drive for the Bone Marrow Donors Program. Kendall Bramble from Freeport, Long Island. A Bonner leader, psychology major and civic engagement minor is a dedicated Division I football teammate who provided excellent campus leadership. He helped start the Black Student Union as well as our Impact Scholars students and is a key mentor in the Wagner Port Richmond Neighborhood Partnership and our high school leadership academy. Kendall's, <clears throat> Kendall's teammates, Ryan Monahan and Najee Harris, are other examples of excellence. Ryan is a three-time member of the Northeast Conference Academic Honor Roll, and Najee Harris just signed on as a free agent with the National Football League's Oakland Raiders for next season. Each of the teams maintained rosters full with scholar athletes and campus citizens just like them. Avika Sagwal from New Delhi, India, came to us as a transfer student. She majored in finance, interned at Deloitte Touche. She's a member of the Nicholas School of Business Selects and the Wagner Women's Professional Network, while she completed, or competed rather, on our Division I tennis team. Today, Avika graduates with a perfect 4.0 grade point average. Jackie Dewey from Milletown, New Jersey, another member of Wagner Selects, co-captain the women's basketball team, and interned at J.P. Morgan Chase. She, will in, she was invited to join the prestigious Wall Street Exchange program. Megan Fritz from Cape Coral, Florida, majored in finance, minored in journalism with a 3.96 GPA while being named the Soccer Ath Scholar Athlete of the Year, and she completed numerous service projects and internships including at NBC Universal and the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Two, <laughs> two, of our young, two of our women's swimmers are just flat-out stars. <clears throat> Rai Niapali from Honolulu, Hawaii, is Wagner's first ever NCAA Division I Championship qualifier and Olympic trial participant. She holds the NEC conference records in the backstroke and individual medley and nine Wagner records while serving as the team captain. As an arts administration major, she interned with the Italian fashion designer La Fiorentina. Please do not tell Karen Garassi about this. We have no room for more shoes in my house. <clears throat> Your teammate, Katja Clayson from Fullerton, California, is a biopsychology major with a minor in cultural competency. As a member of the swimming and diving team, she holds two individual and two relay records at Wagner and was recently named the Northeast Conference Scholar Athlete of the Year. She graduates with a 3.8 GPA, and next academic year, Katja enters the doctoral program in physical therapy at Columbia University. As my remarks chronicle, your class demonstrates remarkable commitment to academic excellence, campus leadership, and civic engagement. It is in the realm of public service that you have garnered tremendous respect from the national higher education world. You have a civic personality that joins your well-developed habits of the mind, both to your habits of the heart and your hard work with your hands. You see the world around you and you jump into those challenges with courage and respect for our local and global neighbors. Whether it's through the Bonner Leader Program, the Impact Scholars Program, or your establishment of the Food Recovery Network, which recycles tons and tons of food to the local needy, 
or involving our athletes in service, such as in the Move Beyond the Bench program, or your work in Park Hill, or with our local Liberian and Mexican communities, or with incredible scholarship and community outreach of the Wagner's Holocaust Center, or Wagner Cares, which responds to immediately to such recent community disasters as Superstorm Standing and it and its long-lasting impacts, or your work with indigenous peoples around the world in Mexico, Ghana, Haiti, Guatemala, and Belize, and many more places. All of this, all of this impactful civic commitment leaves an indelible mark on this campus. It is one so deeply ingrained now and such an essential part of our founder's vision, namely a place of deep and broad knowledge, of independent thinkers and compassionate citizens who would use their education to better themselves establish excellence in their chosen professions, become people of social conscience, and advance the democratic and inclusive mission of this nation. You are living proof that their vision is enduring and powerful. I'll end my remarks with just three more members of your class. Noah Walthausen from Glastonbury, Connecticut, came to us as a men's lacrosse player. I've watched him since his freshman year as he matured and grow, grow into the fine young man he has become. He majored in medical anthropology, he minored in economics, Spanish, and microbiology. He completed a brilliant honors thesis on ancient oral forensics research, linking that work in this innovative field to the contemporary issues of diet and nutrition and social injustice around urban food deserts in the United States communities and urban communities today. In addition to his Division I athletic commitment, he tutored young Mexican immigrants at our local neighborhood partnership, El Centro de Migrante. He applied to join the US Peace Corps, which is now, by the way, more selective than getting into medical school in the United States. It only accepts less than 5% of the applicants. Next year, Noah Walthausen will be a member of the Peace Corps in Cambodia. <clears throat> Jasmine Diaz came to us from Oregon. She double majored in anthropology and Spanish with a minor in civic engagement. As an honor, an honor student, a Bonner leader, Jasmine today graduates with a 3.9 grade point average as a major force in the leader, Bonner's leader program, an impact scholar, and a resident assistant. Jasmine's commitment to improving the world around her is evident in her expansive work with so many of our local and global partners that are chronicled throughout these remarks and embedded in your own biographies. Jasmine's impact can be seen in the Port Richmond neighborhood, the Catholic Charities Refugee Resettlement Program, the Intravarsity Christian Fellowship, and the Women's Professional Network. Her research is a part of a long longitudinal ethnographic study of the trans, in, transnational intersection of the fine, hardworking people of San Geronimo, Mexico, and, their local, and our local Port Richmond community, where these, many of these immigrants come to settle in, on Staten Island. After commencement, Jasmine Diaz will serve as project director for an organization, a nonprofit called Moche, leading development work in Jesus Marie, Peru, a rural community devastated by the recent flooding as a byproduct of El Nino. And finally, Anthony Tucker Bartley from Trenton, New Jersey, first arrived at Wagner in August of 2013 as a member of Wagner's football team for those early practices, for those football players who know what that's like. He had a dream of someday becoming a surgeon. He majored in biology while he played football. He's a Bonner leader and a participant in many campus civic commitments. He was injured twice while playing football and had to leave football in his junior year, and he threw himself into his studies and service work, performing over 1,000 hours in community service. He tutored middle schoolers and mentored high school students, and he received a fellowship for summer study at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. I love that Anthony helped found the chess club and brought to Port Richmond High School and to Wagner College this chess club operation. To Anthony, chess became an equalizer across racial, ethnic, and gender lines, and all the differences and uniqueness that all too often make us strangers to one another. To Anthony and everything that Wagner stands for, Creativity, intelligence, and potential lie within each of us. Chess became the metaphor for this larger set of values. Next year, Anthony Tucker Bartley takes the next step to realize his dream of helping others through a career in medicine, and he's been accepted to medical school at Harvard University.
You face a time of great challenges in our global economy, in our environment, in issues of justice and opportunity, and in issues of war and peace. Because I and the faculty and the staff of this community know who you are, we know what you've done and what you're capable of accomplishing, we have full confidence that your commitment to learning and passion for others will thaw the chill of these global problems and divides and set us all on a path to a better world. In an age too often marked by hatred and terrorism, severe environmental stress, the widening gulfs of wealth and literacy, and access to basic health care, your generation is destined to usher in a new type of leadership where knowledge and empathy are joined to social responsibility and effective action. Don't shrink. Do not shrink from this moment. It is your time to make this global community more open, more innovative, and more just. At Wagner, you've been prepared to meet the challenges of your time. Your personal stories, your personal biographies are intimately tied to the contours of this historical era. Your values and your commitment are our treasures as a people. You have my deepest affection, my best wishes. Whatever I'm able to accomplish as a president is from the inspiration of our faculty and staff and trustees, but mostly is the inspiration I get from you every single day with your enthusiasm and infectious personalities. Thank you, congratulations to each and every one of you on this day. With the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Wagner College and the laws of the State of New York, I hereby confer upon you, Warren Prochi, the degree of uh, Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, and thereby declare that your name will forever be inscribed in the role of Wagner's most esteemed alumni. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Walter. Uh, thank you, Richard. Thank you to my colleagues on the board and to the entire Wagner community. Uh, this is a special honor for me. This will be my most cherished degree because it's been given to me on, on behalf of my efforts for Wagner, not for classroom achievement, which came relatively easy for me. I had to work to get this. In, in terms of providing some kind of leadership and direction to, to help Richard and the college. 49 years ago was my graduation from Wagner. And let me tell you a little bit about my own personal odyssey with Wagner. Uh, even though I'm only 70 years old, my personal odyssey goes back over 85 years. Uh, the Wagner of today is very different from the Wagner of the time that I was here. When I was here, the drinking age was 18. So we were able to go down one hill to a bar that's the Buddy Buddy Club. Uh, its, its successor stands there now, the Roadhouse. And on the other side of the hill, there was an infamous bar on Van Duzer Street, of which I'll say no more. <laughs> I grew up 10 minutes from here, so it was uh, easy for me to get here. But my 85-year history goes back to my father. My father was here from 1932 to 1936 only shortly after Wagner became a degree-granting institute. He grew up in Tompkinsville. Those of you who are Staten Islanders know of Tompkinsville. Very, very poor, the son of immigrants whose father was a longshoreman. They could afford to send him to college. They couldn't afford to send him away to school. So he took advantage of the shining light on the hill at that time, which was Wagner College. I looked at the yearbook the other day. In my father's class, there were 28 graduates and 18 faculty. The college is very, very different from that today. Fast forward 30 years after my dad, and by the way, my father had the opportunity. Wagner gave him the opportunity to go to medical school, uh, earn a good living, and be able to raise a family. So Wagner in the 60s, by that time it had grown, not too different from the current size today, uh, and the faculty was a lot larger, but the, the school had morphed considerably. Uh, no longer exclusively a commuter college. We had the beginning of a residential community. Most of the students in those days came from the tri-state area. In the family that I grew up with, there were three of us, and in order to help save some money, cost of college was expensive back then as well, by the way, uh, I came to, uh, to Wagner. 
My Wagner education has served me very, very well. It enabled me to go to medical school. I've had many educational experience. I have a bachelor's degree from Wagner, and the Wagner of today is different from the Wagner of my time. The, uh, the student body today, as we've heard from Richard, is national. It isn't just tri-state. Uh, we have an international student body. We have a level of academic accomplishment that's an exponential increase over what we had had 30 years ago. So the, the evolution of Wagner has been very impressive. Touching on some of Richard's remarks, I think the value of a liberal arts education enables one to make evolutionary changes in their own life and their own profession as well. So I have an MD from the University of Wisconsin. I did a medical internship. I did a psychiatric residency. I have a PhD in psychoanalysis. I've had an incredible amount of education, obviously. But the single most important and most valuable educational experience was and remains the liberal arts education that I had here. And yes, indeed, the liberal arts education. Thank you. Not just the partying at those bars, which was important, but the liberal arts education. And, and here's an interesting aside. In all of my education, the single most stimulating teacher that I had was someone here at Wagner who's still with us today, Professor Otto Raths. Yes, please. Um, I remember very vividly a couple of conversations in his class about some of the basic fundamental ideas of how the world works, and they've stuck with me today. Not necessarily the content of what I learned, but the ideas behind them. He talked about the four fundamental forces and the difficulty of solving the many-body problem. I saw him earlier this morning, and I said, I hope there are still four fundamental forces. He assured me there are, and I hoped him that we hadn't yet solved the many-bodied problem. So th those things are still out there for us to think about. To me, the, the essence of learning, as I, as I mentioned, is not the content. Facts will fade, but it's the way in which the world works and what we learn about that in a liberal arts education and the way the people in the world work. This is practical. Um, I'm going to quote, and I think Richard Hirsch is a friend of yours. Uh, Richard Hirsch, uh, in, in, in reviewing for this talk, uh, wrote a paper where he talked about what are, the, what are the three fundamental traits that HR directors and CEOs think that prospective employees should have. One, intellectual flexibility. Two, skills and self-expression. Three, a universal understanding of diversity. These are essential components of a liberal arts education, and I think Richard's description of what many of you, the graduates, have accomplished uh, certainly verifies that. Success depends on understanding how things work, how to understand how people work. Wagner, for me, was a portal into this, the first time I really was able to hear and think deeply about this. In religion class here at Wagner, and by the way, one of my regrets is I never got to have Walter as a professor of religion, because he started a couple of years after I did. But in religion class, I learned about Freud for the very first time, and that had an impact on my choice of career. English literature an opportunity to hear about, read about, understand the inner worlds of some of the most interesting individuals in history, even if they were fiction and not fact, because in fiction there was a good deal of truth and validity and important things to learn. In history classes, to learn how people individually and collectively change the course of events and how they were changed also by course of events. And also, something very important to know and keep in perspective, even in a difficult time like this, things are always subject to change. Innovation and creativity will always come along to tackle a problem. In philosophy class, learning how people think about existence and the sense of meaning of life, also in the way that an individual lives his or her own life, and how new ideas come to mind. I'm a psychiatrist psychoanalyst. Every day of my life, I sit in a room across from another person 
trying to help that individual change, trying to help that individual overcome blocks and impediments that interfere with his or her ability to have the most full vocational, relational life that they may have. And the things that impede them are often things that have occurred in their developmental history. In many ways, the process of engagement in psychoanalysis and psychotherapy can be likened to the kind of Socratic method or teaching method, pedantic method that occurs in a liberal arts classroom. Also understanding how innovations in history, literature, philosophy have come about can help one maintain a sense of optimism for that person sitting across the room that he or she can indeed change and that thinly formed insights can eventually become luminescent beacons to take that individual down a, a, a better path. Understanding the possibility of change and how change has occurred, all of these things are derivatives of a liberal arts education of the kind I had right here at Wagner College. Uh, here's a cautionary tale that I, that I love to think about. One of the hospitals where I teach, Harbor UCLA Medical Center, is not far from one of the beaches in Southern California. And a number of years ago, one of my, um, um, I'll, I'll be very tactful, one of my residents who had a little bit of a streak of impertinence, we may all know a little bit about that, uh, he approached me and said, uh, can I have time off to go to the beach? Uh, another thing he said to me was, why should I bother to read medical or psychiatric journals? Because the information in them is going to be obsolete in a couple of years. Uh, my initial uh, impulse was to just dismiss this as a smart alecky comment, and indeed there's a certain ring of truth about what he said. But I frustrated my wish to do so, and I took the question very, very seriously. Yes, much knowledge will fade and become obsolete, but the important thing in looking at a piece of research isn't necessarily the content isn't necessarily what they found or didn't find today, although that is important in its own right. But it's also to understand something about the way that researcher was thinking about the problem. Because even if the current answer that he or she came up with didn't hold up or wasn't correct, probably contained within the way they thought about it was the seed of the next innovation or idea that very well may could work. And again, a liberal arts education is a way that one can begin to think that way in, in their own life. Sigmund Freud, who was the, uh, the founding force of psychoanalysis, uh, if I, I suspect you've had opportunities to read some Freud here at Wagner, most of the stuff that Freud wrote about hasn't held up over time. A lot of it is just no longer accepted and some of it's seen as incorrect. Does that mean you don't study Freud? Absolutely not. Freud opened up a way of thinking about the human mind that has had incredible impact for decades to come. The idea that there are parts of the mind that an individual may not fully be aware of that has an impact on what he or she does and also has an impact collectively on the way individuals and nations behave. And that's very, very worthwhile to keep in mind. So let me finish by saying something about the importance of holding on to the values of liberal arts education and maintaining always an optimism and a willingness to think about change and creativity. Uh, here's, here's some stuff from my liberal arts education. From Shakespeare, we are such stuff as dreams are made on. That's something always worth keeping in mind. And here's a final comment from uh, the, one of the great American wits, Mark Twain, which I find valuable consistently. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you did not do than by the ones you did. So throw off bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, touch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. Thank you. With the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the laws of the State of New York, I hereby confer upon you, Rich Negrin, 
the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters and Honoris Causa, and thereby declare that your name forever be inscribed on the roll of Wagner's most esteemed alumni. Congratulations, Richard. Good morning, class of 2017. Congratulations. This is a bit surreal, so I want to share a story for me uh, about the day that I sat in your chair. Um, and Dr. Garassi doesn't know this story, so I'm, I'm sure he's a little bit nervous uh, about what happened during my graduation ceremony. Um, and there might be some professors here who remember this, um, but pretty unique. And I apologize for you guys that you're not going to have this memorable of a, of a moment. But as I sat there the way you are right now, as the commencement speaker began, just like I just have, um, a protest occurred. So we've all heard of the naked cowboy, right? Well, that day we had the naked Indian. Someone ran down the middle of the aisle in the middle of the commencement speech, naked, dressed with feathers, and protesting, I guess the fact that they hadn't graduated that day. Um, because literally with a spear in their hand, they ran butt naked down the middle of the aisle, threw the spear on the ground, and yelled something about administrative mismanagement. <laughs> and then promptly sprinted away with security in tow. So let's not do that here today. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Kelber and President Garassi. Um, I want to say congratulations to this class of 2017. I remember what a huge accomplishment and the pride that I felt the day that I graduated. But to the faculty, to the administrators, to the parents, you know, let's give a round of applause to all our parents who are here. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this special day. Um, I want to, before I tell, give you my message for the day, and I promise I am going to be brief because it is hot. Yeah, you can clap for that. I want to tell my short Wagner story. You know, Wagner made such a huge difference. You heard a little bit about my background. I've had a number of different jobs in a DA's office, in a law firm, with the city of Philadelphia, many opportunities, and I've been incredibly blessed. But I realize as I prepare to give remarks, you know, I was only here for those four years, and I've been at every other job longer than that. Yet Wagner made such a huge impact in that short period of time. There are people here, like Mark Lebovitz, who is just a lifelong friend and now is a member of the Board of Trustees. Who are all the RAs, the resident assistants in the room? Raise your hand. Yeah. I was Mark's RA, just so you know. And he was not a good freshman, I, I, I just want to say. There was noise and rustling and nonsense going on in that room all the time. And I also had a great study partner, Ed Nikowitz, president of the alumni group, which you're about to join. Let's give Ed a round of applause. Thank you. Ed was my study partner who taught me how to study, and that was not an easy job, I'm just saying. But thank you so much, Ed. But my story began with a great coach who's still here, and I'm lucky to have him, who's now your athletic director, Walt Hamline. Let's recognize him. He recognized in this, in this skinny young man, I am no longer skinny, but um, the potential that I had to grow um, and saw something in me that no one else did and gave me an opportunity to come to Wagner. And then when I was here, I met this great professor who I want to talk about briefly. I've talked about her in the past. She's no longer with us, Dr. Phyllis Andors. Yeah, let's clap for her. So we were this great group. I'm, I'm sure you all have that professor who has made a huge difference in your life. And for me, it was Dr. Phyllis Andors. And we were this great couple because when we'd be together and I, and I was her student assistant and I would spend as much time to get as much wisdom from her as I could. She was about four foot 10, right? Standing next to me at, at six foot four. Um, and, and she was way ahead of her time, and she was this raging feminist at the time, which was great. Yeah. And she would get mad at me every time I would reach to open the door for her when we were walking together. She would literally scold and yell at me. Um, but I can tell you that she made a huge difference in my life. Um, and there was a moment where, towards the end, and I was graduating on graduation day, where she said to me and thanked me 
for changing her mind about student athletes. Um, and I thanked her for really turning me into a student athlete. One of the things that I am proudest of this school is the accomplishments that you see here across the board, the well-roundedness, the civic engagement, the athletes here who are true. The graduation rate for, you, for the athletes here is extraordinary. We should all be incredibly proud of that. That's my short Wagner story and what, what a difference Wagner has made for me. As I prepared uh, for these remarks today, I couldn't help but think way back to that year. The year I graduated was 1988. None of you were alive then, right? Yeah, somebody yelled out, yeah, true. <laughs> Let me give you a snapshot of what life was like at that time when I was graduating. I remember being wowed by how fast and advanced the Apple Macintosh was. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? It had floppy disks and a green screen. Do you guys even know what floppy disks are? <laughs> yeah, you do, okay. We, we listened to our music on CDs. That year, 1988, CDs outsold vinyl records for the very first time. There was a group that had a hit song when I graduated called Millie Vanilli. <laughs> you guys don't know who that is. They rose to, to get a number one hit, and then it was wildly taken away from them because they had limp synced the entire thing and actually didn't sing the song, somebody else did. It was quite a controversy. And if you wanted to call me, you had to use a landline. Nobody had cell phones back then. That's the difference. All these years later, much has changed. There's more power in the iPhone in your pocket than was in that old Macintosh. CDs are obsolete, and as we all download our music wirelessly, you can now follow me on Twitter, at Rich Negrin. Make sure you do that. And no one, no one has a landline anymore, right? Anybody have a landline? There's like, oh yeah, only the old people on stage. <laughs> but while many things have changed, many of the challenges that I faced on graduation day still stand before you. And that's what I want to talk about today, how you meet and overcome those challenges. A stagnant economy, great jobs are still hard to come by, poverty, gun violence, and addiction still plague many of our communities. And we had, in 1988, a lot of political turmoil. Surprise, surprise. You guys have a lot of political turmoil. The world's circumstances guaranteed that many of my classmates would face adversity. These are challenging times. The same is true today as it was for me. There are those on the right and the left who would seek to divide us, to focus on our differences. But I assure you, your parents, your professors, those who have brought you here today to this great day of celebration, this day of achievement, will also see you through all those challenges, the ones we face today. You are ready to thrive ready to make your mark. So my message is this, that your success is less dependent on your IQ and your EQ, and more dependent on what I call AQ, your adversity quotient, your ability to overcome challenges and failures and still get up and still keep moving forward. As you experience challenges, keep in mind that they will be balanced with many blessings. I'm here to tell you that it is often through your adversity that you truly find your life's purpose. That has been the story of my life. I'm sure, as you heard, my childhood was not unlike many of yours. Born in Newark, New Jersey, an urban environment full of challenges, a family of divorce, suffering some financial struggles a son of immigrants. Then, at 13, it happened. I lost my dad to violence. He was gunned down in the street right in front of me. I held him as he died, covered in blood. Nothing can prepare you for that. But believe me when I tell you, and this is the surprise, that even in that horror, 
I found great hope. That single event became the driving force in my life, a life of purpose. Sure, nothing can make up for that loss, but I was blessed with an incredible stepdad that changed my life, who restored my faith and gave me strength to turn away from violence and bitterness. I found strength in my faith and my family. And yes, there was a football family and a Wagner family that helped make a difference to me. That really helped. And I learned to get back up. I found my life's purpose. In that personal crisis, I found the passion to fight to prevent violence, to work to improve people's lives, a passion to serve, a passion that many of you have and have learned here in Philadelphia. What was here in, at, at Wagner? What was the most horrible event in my life was the opportunity that I had to meet the first lawyer that I ever met, to watch those proceedings. And actually, I was a freshman at Wagner when I testified in that trial and learned about the criminal justice system. If it wasn't for that horrible occasion, I would have never gone to law school. So what life intended for evil has become a blessing overall. Now, as you sit here today, you may have your doubts about yourself. I know I did. You may fear the uncertainty of an unknown future. You may question your ability to get back up every single time. Throughout your life, you will face challenges. You will have failures. There will be dark days. That is a hard truth. But you will also have days of great triumph, days like today. I promise you, if you push through those challenges with grit and determination, you will be rewarded. That has been my experience. I have known the heartbreak of losing football games and missing the playoffs. But I have also known the glory of winning a national championship right here at Wagner College. I have felt the sting of being cut by a football team. But I have also known the joy of signing an NFL contract. I have known the disappointment of that first grade in law school. Wow. <laughs> but I have also felt the honor of graduating law school with distinction and passing the bar exam my very first time. <laughs> yes, I have suffered personal tragedies, but I have also helped manage a great city and worked to improve the lives of so many that I can't even count. I suffered a setback just this week, losing an incredibly difficult election, taking on a self-funded millionaire and a billionaire super PAC. But I also connected with thousands of people, citizens and voters, and those who were vulnerable, and shared a vision for our city that I know lives on today. I know all of you can rise to your occasion. As we come together to celebrate your success, each of you should be proud of your work and of your purpose. Fear not, you are up to the challenge. Your parents, your professors, and Wagner has prepared you for that. I know that your adversities will also bring great triumphs. In closing, I want to leave you with a few simple truths to remember and that you can apply in your life every single day. Always speak truth to power. Always speak truth to power. Stay true to your values, no matter what. Have the courage right now to take risks. Do not be afraid. Become better, not bitter, when you face adversity. Dare to achieve. Aspire to greatness. Work for a more just society. Do not fear failure. Be bold. Take on the big fights. Fight to safeguard our highest ideals as Americans. And here's something really important. 
don't wait your turn. I'm going to say that again. Don't wait your turn. We need your talents and your leadership today, right now. Let your life speak. And whatever you do next, as they say, don't count your days, but make your days count. Remember those things, and your triumphs will outnumber your tragedies, and you will all be champions in life. God bless you. Thank you very much. I now have the pleasure of introducing two, our two speakers, two student speakers. I'll ask them to come forward to the podium together. I introduced them earlier, Dylan Quinn and Gabrielle Olapu. Gabby, Dylan, come on forward. Talo Falava. I bring greetings in the Samoan language, the language of my family, to President Garasi, the trustees, administration, faculty, alumni, and my fellow members of the class of 2017. I would like to give a special thanks to all of the parents, grandparents, friends, and loved ones who have helped us as students make it to this special day. My name is Gabrielle Oluwafu, and I am from Auckland, New Zealand, and it is my honor to be standing up here today speaking with you all. The Wagner experience allows all students to learn and better themselves throughout their college career in many different ways. The college is constantly pushing students to think outside the box and consider opinions that challenge their own. Wagner has a way of empowering all students, the world's future leaders, to know that they have a voice and that it matters regardless of your color, religion, gender, or sexuality. Over my four years here at Wagner College, I have competed as a Division I athlete, worked as an orientation coordinator, and coordinated the LEAD program where older students mentor and cultivate the leadership abilities of younger minority students. This year, I also had the privilege of serving as the Black Student Union President. <laughs> Through the Black Student Union and LEAD program, I have had the opportunity to critically analyze race relations in the United States and push for changes that are moving us towards a more inclusive and equitable environment. While mourning the loss of the countless black men that have died at the hands of police and talking about racial issues on this campus while standing in solidarity with other college students, we have been able to work with different groups of people to address issues that we have been facing. One action that was important to myself and the BSU and um, Sorry. One action that was important to myself and BSU was the Race Relations Summit we hosted with the Student Government Association last year. It provided a campus-wide platform to voice our concerns about the racial climate in the United States and here at Wagner. We were able to demonstrate how mi racial microaggressions have a huge effect on people of color. Whether these words are spoken or put on social media, words have the power to change lives. In these socially and politically polarized times, this dialogue demonstrated to me how we as students can discuss and debate problems and can even help to change the national dialogue. We found hope when our fellow students took into account the viewpoints opposed to their own. What I learned from this is that conflict is not a barrier to progress. Rather, conflict grants people the opportunity to grow as individuals and as a community. Conflict presents an opportunity to stand up for others who do not enjoy our privileges. This past year, we have seen many marginalized groups push backwards. Muslims, people of color, the LGBTQ community, immigrants, and people with disabilities. We as human beings cannot stop fighting for a more equitable society. While we might not be able to fully understand others' struggles, we must put ourselves into their shoes and attempt to understand their fears and concerns, and even more so, their hopes and dreams. As people, we must understand that ignoring conflict and pretending that it is not there is not always the best option. As a group, we must work through it. 
to all of my peers as we venture out into this world, I challenge you. I challenge you to all to continue having these conversations and confronting ideas that contradict your own. Talking definitely does not bring immediate results. Instead, it plants the seeds that allow larger ideas to grow. As citizens of this world, it is our job to continue making these changes and pushing for whatever we believe in while demanding that the people in power make the changes that we wish to see. Positive change does not happen instantaneously, but it comes slowly through persistent conversations. What matters is that you are making progress for the people coming after you so that they don't have to encounter the same obstacles that you had to face. Thank you, Fafitai Tele Lava Wagner College for the past four years, and congratulations and good luck to the class of 2017. Good afternoon, Dr. Garassi, Dr. Prochi, members of the Board of Trustees, respected administrators, esteemed alumni, thank you for celebrating with us today. Thank you for providing us with the resources we needed to succeed. To our parents, our friends, and the loved ones who made this day possible, thank you. And hello to the class of 2017. When I first came to college, as my classmates can attest to, I was loud and probably more annoying than I'll care to admit, whether it was in class, in a friend's dorm, or usually in the library at a volume too high for my studying peers, I was always talking. However, beginning my freshman year within my loud voice and through my lack of understanding, I began to find a deeper purpose. My experiences at Wagner shaped me, empowered me, and allowed me to transform my voice and use it to become an advocate for change. If my time at Wagner has taught me anything, it's that we must listen more, speak less, and when we do speak, speak with purpose. In the spring of my sophomore year of college, I was elected to serve as the president of the Student Government Association. When I first obtained this position, I was excited to have the unique opportunity to be able to directly advocate for my peers. I was ready to be a loud and aggr aggressive force on behalf of the students of this campus. However, what I first thought would be a year discussing mundane complaints developed into two terms of service filled with addressing deep and complex issues facing the campus. I found myself having a deeper purpose to use my new position to elevate the issues, improve campus for my peers, and bring people together. I realized that while being loud in these situations could work, sometimes the best way to address change is through thoughtful conversations that provide context and depth for why things are the way that they are. The Wagner community could have turned us away from tough conversations. They could have ignored our calls for change. However, even with slight disagreements and some hesitations, our community came together to confront these challenges. This pattern of community, a commitment to caring and engagement, has guided our experiences on campus time after time. It was when hundreds of our community members signed the Declaration of Change to improve diversity and inclusion on campus. It was when over 200 students came together to engage in a race relations summit, committing to understanding a deeper perspective. It was times when we became close friends with people whom we disagreed. We spent time with those people, allowed them to challenge what we knew, and became more informed individuals. If in all of these situations we would have kept talking and not truly listened, we never would have understood the importance and the impact of the situations surrounding us. So class of 2017, what can we learn from this? How can we consider our experiences and use what we learn to have an impact? First, we must engage with people who are different from us. When you begin to see the world through the eyes of those whose experiences differ from yours, you can comprehend each situation on a deeper level. For the most part, we are all seeking the same answers. Our challenge is determining how we will get there, what role we will play, 
in how loud or quiet we choose to be as we advocate for change. Second, stand strong in your convictions, but recognize that there is always more to learn, more to understand, and more to experience. My fellow graduates, I encourage you to find your voice and determine the best volume to be the best advocate you can be. Congratulations, class of 2017. Today we celebrate, tomorrow we get to work to make a difference.